heart aches, who dries the tears from your eyes? Do you know, my Jesus? Do you know, my friend? Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide till the end? Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Psalms tonight, if you would. We're talking about a pattern of good works uh, over in Titus, where we got the text from, uh, verse chapter 2, verse 7. But he wants us to be honest individuals. He wants us to be humble individuals. And then he wants us to be holy individuals. And I want to continue the thought about the holiness of God tonight. I think sometimes we forget that the Lord has no hands but our hands. He has no feet but our feet. He has no body upon this earth but us. Now, he could have done it some other way, but in his divine wisdom, he chose that men and women and boys and girls would be the extension of the hand of God. And if anybody gets to heaven, they're going to get there by somebody that witnessed to them with a mouth. Right. Now, he could have sent the angels down from heaven and plastered all across the heavens. He didn't choose that method. He said, I want you to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. And he said, I want every man, woman, boy, and girl that is on this planet to be saved. Now, I know all of them will not be saved, without a doubt, but he loves them all the way to the mouth of hell. And I'm grateful that he does. But he wants us to live right. He wants us to live the right kind of life. How many of you sometime in your Christian life in recent days, maybe recent weeks or recent months, or you don't have to raise your hand, have just been ashamed of your Christian life? You ever got down to talk to the Lord and you felt so ashamed? And yet beyond that shame that we may have, God just loves us. And there's nobody in this room who is immune to failing. But all of us ought to be climbing with the grace of God, with his help, day after day after day after day to reach the goal that I'll talk about in just a moment. In the book of Psalms, if you open your Bible to 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. Now look right up here. How many verses does it have? 170. Six, 170, how many has it got? Very good class. It's divided into eight sections, which is the Hebrew language from Alpha to Omega, which has 22 letters, and the entire, and they tell me, if you open it up to Psalm 119, in most Bibles, it's right in the middle, right in the middle of your Bible. You pretty well look at it and see, that's a good place for it to be, isn't it? This is the Word of God, and all of Psalm 119 is about the Word of God. And there's eight different words that are used to describe the word, including the word word, but you'll see those several of them in the context that we'll read tonight. We're going to go down to Beth, which is the second letter in the alphabet, starting with verse 9, go down through verse 16, and perhaps we could gain a truth or two that would be a help to us before we go to the house tonight. Let's stand together for the reading of the word of God, please, if you can, in reference to the old blessed book. Wherewithal, or how, shall a young man cleanse his way? It's a question. And then it says, by taking heed thereto, according to thy what? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy what? Thy what? Have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy what? And with my lips have I declared all thy what? Of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy yes. testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy and have respect unto thy. Ways. I will delight myself in thy Stand. and I will not forget. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Just in those 16 verses, over and over again, he's emphasizing the importance of this book. And I'm going to say honestly tonight, and I'm saying we, I don't think we understand what we got. I don't, think we, I don't think we're touching the hem of the garment 
of what we have in our hands today. And God has given us a holy Bible. That's what mine says. And oh, here it says Holy Bible and King, KJV, but it's a holy Bible. It tells us where we come from, tells us who we are, tells us where we're going. And most of the Bible in the New Testament tells us how to live. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, give the description of the life and death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ from four eyewitness views. You get over to the epistles, Paul begins to explain how Christians are supposed to live. And most of the New Testament, and how many books are in the New Testament? How many books are in the New Testament? How many books are in the New Testament? How many in the New Testament? 27. So that means there's how many in the Old Testament? 39. Same age Jack Benny was for years, if you know who Jack Benny is. How many knows who Jack Benny was? Half the congregation had no clue who Jack Benny was, but he always said he was 39 years old. 39 and 27 make 66. Someone has referred to the Bible as Route 66 and take you where you need to go if you just follow the path that God's laid out. Father, help us to be a blessing tonight. Nothing greater in all the world than open up the old book. I pray, God, that you will speak to us tonight on the subject of being cleansed by the power of the Word of God. And Father, may you be glorified. We love you and need you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord for the Vervos family with this past weekend. Had a good time and great messages and praise the Lord for them. Praise the Lord for the blood. Had two folk come by today and just said, want to come by and say hi and give us money. And uh, that was always a blessing. I said, hi, and reached this way. Hi. And, and they said, we want to bring you some money for the church. And praise the Lord for that. And I'm grateful that God's always mindful of us and watches over us. Yeah. To be victorious, you have to have a desire to be pure. Now listen very carefully. I want you to hang on every word I say. Because the introduction may be longer than the sermon. Uh, but I want you to get the introduction. If you're going to be victorious in your Christian life, which means to be Christ-like, and to overcome sin in your life, and I overcome sin in my life, I've got to have a desire to be pure. God is holy. Amen. And I read to you last week in Peter, he said, Be ye therefore holy as I am holy. Now that's a pretty big assignment to say. He says, Be ye therefore perfect as I am perfect. Now you say, Preacher, it's impossible. Well, how far up the road are you from what you used to be? How many of you got some victories in your life if we can say it this way, you got some victories under your belt, some things you used to have battle with. You don't have a battle with it much anymore. Now, there'll always be something you battle. Everybody in this room's got a besetting sin. I don't know what yours is. You don't know what mine is, but most people have a besetting sin or they have a weight that weights them down in the race of life. And God wants us to get out of those and go on to victory. There's stages that people go through. For instance, follow this thinking. 